Hi guys, welcome to science class. So today we're going to move on to solutions. This is day one of two and tomorrow we're going to learn more about solutions. So the materials that you need for this lesson are first the textbook scan pages. We're going to be reading pages 76 and 77. And then your workbook scanned page 53. So all of these materials should be in the email that I sent on Sunday. Awesome. So let's get started with this PowerPoint. So basically solutions, we know that from yesterday we learned about the heterogeneous solution, I mean heterogeneous mixtures and the homogeneous mixtures. And if you remember, the homogeneous mixtures are, are the mixtures where all the substances and the ingredients are mixed evenly throughout, like a strawberry milkshake. So a solution is a homogeneous mixture. What is it? So if you look at these pictures, you can see in the first one, they have the salt going in the water and it's dissolving, right? We've all seen that. So a solution is basically a mixture in which all of the substances are spread evenly throughout, okay? So if you look at this GIF over here, so this person puts salt inside the water. If you look at this, did the salt actually disappear? The answer is the salt actually dissolved inside the water. Okay, so take a look at this media over here. So dissolving, that is a process. So it is a process when the particles of one substance, they separate and they spread evenly throughout another substance. So in other words, we have two substances here. The first one was salt, second one was water. Dissolving is when the salt went inside the water and then the salt separated and spread all the way throughout the water. So that is the process of dissolving. So if you look here, it's kind of like a microscopic action going on. You can see the salt particles, they're separating and they're moving throughout evenly into the water. And that is dissolving. So let's look at this delicious iced tea. I don't know if you go to the movie theater, sometimes you might order iced tea. If it's not sweet enough, you might put some sugar in it. My question for you is, can sugar dissolve in iced tea? Well. If you've had this experience, you'll probably know the answer. Yes, sugar did dissolve inside the iced tea. Although we can't physically see the grains of sugar in the tea, you can still taste the sugar, right? The iced tea is sweeter. So yes, sugar did dissolve in this iced tea. So in this case, you can see in the first picture, you can clearly see the crystals of sugar. But in the second picture, once it dissolves, you can't see the crystals anymore. However, we know that it, it is still in there because we can taste the sweetness. So this is another example of a physical change. Just like the strawberries and ice cream went through a physical change to make that milkshake. In this example, the sugar went through a physical change. You, it went from a visible crystal into well, it dissolved in the iced tea and you can now taste the sweetness. So now, switching gears. Parts of a solution. Three parts. So the first one is solute. Solute. So take a look at this, these blue colored sugar looking substances. That is our solute. Solute is the substance that is dissolved into something else. So solutes are our sugars, our salts, okay? Solvent is the substance um, that dissolves the solvent, the solute. So solute is the substance that goes inside the solvent. So solvent, we got water, iced tea, orange juice, a lot of liquids, right? When you add those two together, you create a solution. So in the solution, you can see that the solute, it actually dissolved into like a blue color, right? And then the solvent, you can still see that the water liquid's there. So again, solute, 
These are our sugar salts. Solvent is like the water, iced tea, and liquids that dissolves the salute. Got it? I know the words are very similar to each other, so it's very confusing. So it might help to actually write it down. Um, I like to think of things as examples in the real life. So salute, I just think of sugar, right? And solvent is like the water. And the solution is the answer, right? The, what happens when you combine them, when you add them together? All right, so big question of the day. What is the most common solvent on the earth? The most common liquid that can be used to dissolve other substances? The answer is water. Did you get that? Okay, now we're going to look at some substances that are inside different solutions. So first let's look at air. What is inside an air solution? A couple of things. We got water, we got oxygen, and we got carbon dioxide. All of those substances mixed, separated, and, and spread evenly to create an air solution. Next, we have soda. Super yummy, but super bad for our teeth. So, yeah, soda is a solution. It's actually a solution of gas and some other substances that are inside a liquid. And the bubbles that we see in soda, they're actually from carbon dioxide, as you probably know, that actually dissolved into the liquid. Therefore, carbon dioxide is actually the solute, the sugars and the salts, and the liquid is the solvent. Such a complicated, such a complicated so, uh, mix of things just to create coke. Got cola and Fanta soda. All right, now we're going to look at some uh, metals. So metals that mix together, so of course that can also be mixed to create other substances. And metals that mix are called alloys. Let me write that out for you. <laughs> Make that bigger. Alloys. So what do we call metals that mix? Alloys. So for example, we got a nickel. A nickel is, you know, we got nickel and copper. We also got gold and other metals that mix together is called an alloy, all right? So that is um, the PowerPoint and we're, let's actually go ahead and read the textbook. So I already got the <laughs> textbook pages opened up. We are going to be looking at pages 76 and 77, just two pages. And again, at this point, if you would rather read alone, that's totally fine. Just you can stop the video here and read it on your own. But if you'd like to read with me, go ahead and continue watching. Solutions. Salt and sand do not mix evenly, but water added to the mixture does mix evenly with the salt. Salt and water form a solution. A solution is a mixture in which all the substances are spread evenly throughout. The salt dissolves in the water and seems to disappear. So dissolving is the process in which the particles of one substance separate and spread evenly throughout another substance. Other substances can dissolve and form solutions as well. Suppose that you mix sugar into iced tea. You cannot observe the grains of sugar in the tea because some physical properties of the sugar have changed. However, if you taste the tea, you know that the sugar is there. The sugar has undergone a physical change to form a solution, but it has not become another substance. It's still sugar. Scientists have special terms that they use to describe the parts of, of a solution. First, a solute is the substance that is dissolved, so are sugars and salts. A solvent is the substance that dissolves the other substance, like water. In salt water, the salt is the solute and the water is the solvent. Water is the most common solvent on the earth, so it's often called the universal solvent because so many things dissolve in it. So water's ability to dissolve many substances is very important to life on the earth.
So here we got a visual. I love visual examples. So the solute here, we have the sugar. The solvent is the water. You combine it together to form the solution, the sugar water. Great example here. <clears throat> all right. So you might think that all solutions are formed from a solid being dissolved in a liquid. But that is not the case, however. The solute and the solvent of a solution can actually be a solid, liquid, or gas. This means that there are different types of solutions. Air is the solution of gases. The oxygen that you breathe and the carbon dioxide plants need are two of the most common gases in the air solution. A soft drink is a solution of a gas and other substances in a liquid. The bubbles that you see are from the carbon dioxide gas that has dissolved in the liquid. The carbon dioxide in the soft drink is a solute and the liquid is the solvent. You use many metal products that are formed from a mixture of two solids. These mixtures of two or more metals are called alloys. And a nickel coin is actually an alloy of the solid metals nickel and copper. Even 14 karat gold jewelry is gold that has other metals added to it. So it's not just pure gold. Great. So we are going to pause. We're going to stop the video here for now. And I'm going to do a part two where we can actually go over some of the answers in the workbook page. But I would like to encourage you to try to do it on your own and then watch the second video to go over the answers. All right. Great job again. And I'll see you soon.